In the last video I explored how to take a 3D character from Blender and turn it into a realistic one using Stable Diffusion through Comfy UI. But a lot of you asked me if it was possible to use the same method to make an animated look. So I went to work to solve the issues I was previously having trying to get this result. So let's jump into Blender. Like the last time I'll be using the Human Generator. But as I've said before, you aren't limited to just using this, you can use any model you like. As per usual, we'll delete the cube. We can select a human from the drop down window. We'll go with a female for this example. Once we've added the character, let's give her some clothes so YouTube doesn't get the wrong idea. We have a range of options here, but I like to keep it a little bit simple in case I need to do any modifications later. So, jeans and t-shirt will do for this. Let's give her a hairstyle, something that wouldn't excessively move since I don't plan on doing any hair simulations this time around. I need to make some modifications to the body. Since I'm making her more of an anime-like character, she's gonna need bigger eyes. If we go to body, special, this stylized slider will make the character's eyes grow. It also makes the character a little bit skinny, so you may need to keep an eye on that. While it looks like it maxes out at one, we can actually enter any number we want manually. Within reason, of course. The effect will break quite fast if you go nuts with it. Then I'll go to face, eyes, and here I'll be able to increase the height of the eyes so they don't look too elongated to the sides. Feel free to play with all these settings and get the look that you're after. This next step only goes for female characters. Though, if you're making a male character, you may want to paint eyeliner on him to get some of those eyelid outlines in the animated version. Go to Skin, Makeup, and then down the bottom you'll find the eyeliner. It'll be set to black already. Let's bump this up to 10 and then adjust it down so it doesn't look too overpowering. We're going to change our camera lens. By default, Blender uses a 50mm lens. But I've found that when most people draw cartoons and comics, the shape of the face resembles more of a 100mm lens. This keeps the face from looking too distorted at most angles. But this is a personal preference, you don't need to do this if you're after that more exaggerated perspective look. You can also change the perspective camera in Blender to 100mm so everything looks the same, both in the camera and out of it. I'm going to add an empty to the base of my character. Select the armature, press CTRL and select the empty. And then press CTRL P to parent the armature to the empty. This way we can use the empty to move the character around the scene instead of having to move the camera. This method doesn't always work for every instance, but for a 2D cartoon I'm trying to think in the way the old cameras would in traditional animation. It would be a static camera while the animator would move the character around the frame. So that way if I give my character a walk cycle, I can move her through the scene using the empty. In saying that, the other reason I don't move the camera is I want to make sure that the majority of the character is in the frame at all times. When we get too close to the edge of the frame, we risk something that I've been harping on about for a while now. When something passes over another object or it gets too close to the edge, the AI tends to distort or change the image randomly. We don't want that. We want our character to stay the same. Let's add a plane. Rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees and send it right back. Scale it up to cover the whole background in the camera view. Add an emission material and set it to 100% green. This will act as our green screen so we can easily key our character out in post. You'll notice that the green is a little bit pale. Head over to the render properties, all the way to the bottom, color management and set the view transform to standard. This will give you a better idea of what your render will look like. Click on the shading tab, select the eyes and then in materials pick the inner eye material. We're gonna plug the eye color into the emission of the principal shader. This way the lighting doesn't affect the eyes. If we were gonna see into the mouth, I would do the exact same thing for those materials inside the mouth. This way we wouldn't end up with shadowed eyes and mouth cavities. Cartoons usually have the mouth be an actual color, not just a black hole in the face. I'm gonna create another empty to drive the lights. And I'll raise it up to the same height as the head. In order to use an industry standard lighting setup, we'll go with the three point lights. You'll need to go to the add-ons and activate this if it's the first time you've ever used it. As you can see, each light is designated a name. You got the backlight, key light, and fill light. Key light is our principal light. Fill light adds light to the shadowed side, and the backlight will give us our highlight rim. Because we had the empty selected, the lights are pointing towards it. Make sure to parent all three to that empty. Switch the render engine to cycles. Don't stress, it won't take hours to render this. Set the device to GPU and experimental feature set. This is going to give us a feature that isn't available in Eevee, but it's crucial for the cartoon look that we're after. Beam shape is the feature that I'm referring to. We need to tighten the light's beam by more than half. 
I'll set all the lights to 75 degrees spread. Switch to rendered view and select the key light. Boost the light's power level to 75. Select the fill light and set this one to 50. And then we'll select the back light and set it to 150. You can see that I have a flat even look to the lighting. In most cartoons, you'll see that the lighting is flat with minimal shadows. Let's say we wanted a nighttime scene. Instead of darkening the scenes and lowering the power of the lights, we can change the color of the lights to something a little bit cooler and have the backlight offset with a different color. This technique gives the AI more information to work with and still has that look that we're going for. You can also experiment with the lights by turning one or more of them off. In this instance, I kept only the key light and positioned it off to one side to give it a more moody look. I'll reset all my lights and render one frame. You can see that it took a minute and 20 seconds. This won't do. We'll waste too much time rendering in Blender. Head back to the render properties and change the noise threshold to 0.9 and the samples between 1024 and 2048. Now let's render the same frame. I'll leave this one going in real time. The quality of the render is more than enough for what we need and it's down to almost nine seconds. You can drop that time even further if you go all the way down to 1024. The good thing about the human generator is that we can have it set up our Rigify rig automatically. This is gonna take a moment. Once this finishes, we'll head to the object data properties under the bone collections and make the new rig visible. I'll create a small animation now using the auto keyframe function, jumping back and forth in the timeline. Animation isn't the easiest thing to get a hang of. And that brings me to the sponsor of this video. When learning new skills, it's easy to get lost in the sea of online tutorials. I would know, learning Blender took me a long time. I know what it feels like to not know where to start, but most times you'll watch a one hour tutorial just to walk away with one new tip. With Skillshare's learning pathways, you have the option to go through carefully curated hand-picked lessons that build upon each other. Skillshare offers a variety of different classes, including but not limited to photography, graphic design, business, marketing, and music. For instance, the Build 3D Models and Animation with Blender classes start off by showing you the basics so you understand the user interface. Which, let's be honest, if it's the first time you're using Blender, it can be daunting. No offense to the Blender developers, I know they've come a long way trying to make it more user friendly. The awesome thing about this is that you can follow along with these lessons. Check out my render. I may have gotten a little carried away. And by the end of it, you can submit your results and get feedback. These lessons cover a range of experience levels from beginner all the way to advanced. It's never been a better time to invest in yourself by taking your skills to the next level. The best thing is that the first 500 people to use the link in this video's description will get a one month free trial to Skillshare. Check it out and let me know how you go. Now we can render out our animation. And if you guys want more in-depth tutorials on how I sculpted this t-shirt and made her muscles grow mid-shot, let me know in the comments. Before I forget, join my newsletter to get the companion PDF with the Comfy UI workflow that I'll be using. The link will be in the description. Load the new workflow in the companion PDF. If there's any red nodes, use the Comfy UI manager to install them. Once you're ready, add the directory of the image sequence you made. Make sure that the resolutions are correct. In my case, I'll be working with 1024 by 1024 images. Do not do this if you don't have a powerful GPU. I've got a 3090 with a lot of RAM in the computer. If you don't, don't go there. Go 512, it works out just fine. Select your checkpoint. I'll be using the Eternal Dark Golden Max with the Moist Mix VAE model. Since I'm using a model that doesn't have a VAE baked into it, I set my VAE switch to two. I have my LCM LoRa loaded. I'll be updating the resolutions to 2024. If you're using 512, go with 512. I'm gonna be using the depth Animate Diff and Open Pose as my control net models. You can change these if you want, but I've been getting the best results with these ones. You will see the previews come up in these windows so you know what's going on. The K sampler is set to LCM, but you can change that to whatever you wish. Add your positive and negative prompts. Give the save image a name. If you use a forward slash, it will create a folder to store the resulting images. Do the same with the video combiner, then click on the Q prompt button. Remember, depending on the length of the animation and the resolution, it will influence how long this generation will take. It's not a quick process, this may take a while. The first thing it'll do is it'll load all your images and run it through the depth control net. As you can see here, it's perfectly separated her from the background. The second one will be open pose. You can check the command prompt to see how it's going. As you can see here, it's found one person in each frame. This may take a while. Once the generation is complete, we have both the individual frames and also the combined video. 
In order to create the final video, I ran the character through the Comfy UI workflow twice, once with white skin and once with green skin, and then I combined it in post. In the next video, I'll show you how to integrate your character into a scene using an AI generated background like this one in a 3D space. If you have any questions about the process, let me know in the comments. Remember to subscribe to be notified when the next video comes out. If you enjoyed this video, check out this next one I picked for you.